Hi friends, it's Grace and welcome back to another video. Hopefully the lighting is okay because it is like extremely rainy and dreary outside. Um, I am filming this on the 1st of December and I would be down for like snow personally, but the rain just really makes it feel <laughs> A little bit sad outside so um with that said however i am filming kind of an exciting video because this is gonna be like a big old wrap up of my november wrap up and my december tbr in one video and one of the reasons that i'm doing this is because i do have like a lot of end of year videos that i'm gonna want to make so it's kind of easier to get this in one video but then the other reason is just because like the last time I actually finished a book was November 23rd and then I started like three books and finished none of them so we have a lot of carryover from November into December and then we also have like carryover in books that I haven't read yet but like that I recently talked about in videos that are going to be in December and I just feel like this end of month is a little bit more blurry than most. Usually I like to finish stuff by the end of the month so that I can start fresh, but November into December just feels extremely messy. So we're just going to talk about it all together. Okay, so as I mentioned, I started a bunch of books near the end of November that I didn't actually finish, so I will just quickly mention what those are before we get into my November wrap-up. So I'm currently in the midst of um, Assassin's Fate by Robin Hobb, so we will talk about Fool's Quest as well, but this was our December buddy read, but we got started on it a little bit earlier just because of the timing of how long it's going to take us to read, and then with like traveling that's going to go on with me and Ben reading this together, but he is going to travel home to his parents for Christmas, and then he's going to travel to come see me, so we wanted to wrap up the book, uh, mid-December-ish rather than letting it drag on longer than that. And then the other two that I am currently reading are Emily Wilde's Encyclopedia of Fairies, which I'm about, I think, 30% of the way through that one. And then the book that I am the closest to finishing at this point is um, Daughter of the Beast by E.C. Greaves. So this is the first book that I have gotten into to start reading for the Spiffbo finalists. And so I am actually pretty close to finishing this one. So I will be putting up like a review. I think I'm going to wait until I read a second Spiffbo book. And then I will put up reviews that are kind of like of a couple of them at a time. But there will be dedicated review videos for those books as well. And then the one last thing to talk about is that I did have one DNF in the month of November, unfortunately, and that was Empire of Silence by Christopher Rocchio. I got to about 100 pages of Empire of Silence, um, which is down here somewhere, and then I, I kind of decided that this was it's too much for me at the moment. Um, it throws a lot at you at the beginning of it, and... I was a little bit confused, actually a lot, a lot confused. And on top of that, I was hoping for more like interpersonal and relationship building, but because of the fact that we are in our main character's head and being told like a retrospective story, we were in his head a lot and we also got a lot of his view on like political happenings and kind of for me the combination of not understanding what was going on with also being thrown kind of a lot of politics in right at the beginning meant that I was like a combination of bored and confused and I think that so I did DNF this but I also think that um, I could come back to it in the future because now I know like what I'm getting myself into and I think that at that point and at this point right now I'm much more in the mood for something like Emily Wilde's Encyclopedia of Fairies where it's not making me work so hard. Um, this was making me work really hard and I, I just couldn't do it at that point. So I know this is unfortunate because I really wanted to like this series, but um, I'm still like, I'm open to the possibility of coming back to it. I just, I DNF'd it this month. 
Okay, now let's move on to the books that I actually did finish in the month of November. There are four of them. And the first one, um, well, not the first in order, but the lowest rated and moving to the highest rated is how I usually do things. So the lowest rated thing that I finished in November is a teeny tiny <laughs> little story, um, Galatea by Madeline Miller. I gave this four stars and I don't really know that there's much I can say about it just because it is a short story. Um, so I don't want to spoil it. But aside from like what you can learn from the synopsis is that Galatea is a statue who has been brought to life um, and was sculpted by this artist who like now that she has been brought to life is her husband but her husband is very jealous and mean and and petty and so basically tries to keep her locked up because he doesn't want anyone else to see her um he doesn't want any other men to see her because she is so beautiful because she was like this perfect statue um and so we kind of like get a story stemming from that and so I really liked this but honestly like I know the purpose of it was to be a short story but I thought it was too short <laughs> like I would have liked to explore this more like some of Galatea's thoughts and feelings and then some of the interactions with like their daughter and the motivations and like they're striving for their goal in the story um it all happened very quickly of course and i just would have liked more of it so yeah this is four stars quite good I suppose the good news is that aside from Empire of Silence, um, I really loved what I did finish this month. So uh, coming in at four and a half stars, we have Divine Rivals by Rebecca Ross. Um, this is nominated for the YA category, like YA fantasy in the Goodreads Choice Awards. And my take is that this is not really YA. Like the characters are young, the characters are 18 and 19. So I get from that perspective that it might just be shelved or considered or marketed as YA. But like from my perspective, this was not reading very juvenile or very young at all. And like it wasn't, um, it wasn't steamy or anything in terms of like the romance, but the the concept of this book is that we have our main character Iris and she has a job at a paper where she is doing various like projects and it could be something as mundane as like typing up the obituaries but essentially she has a rival at this paper named Roman and they are both doing whatever assignments they can get their hands on at the moment because they are competing for a promotion to columnist at this paper but the backdrop of this story is that they're there is a war going on between two gods and um, Iris's older brother has gone to fight in the war and so she is very um well she's obviously got a personal vested interest in what happens to her brother and what happens on the front lines of the war and Roman we learn a little bit more about his home life and Iris isn't as well off Roman's family is very well off and um we, we kind of see like, it's a rivalry, but we see like a friendship and maybe something more develop between the two of them. And Iris ends up writing letters to her brother that she tries to send, but they actually end up going to Roman and he, he writes back to her, but she doesn't know who it is that she's actually writing to. And so they learn a lot about each other through these letters. But the reason for me that this doesn't seem YA in my opinion is the depictions of grief and the depictions of war and the fact that like, I mean, Rebecca Ross, she, she didn't include anything gratuitous necessarily, but in my opinion, she didn't pull her punches either. Like she, she went there in terms of talking about and showing exactly what it was that she wanted to show. And so I don't really think this is for like 12 to 13 year olds. I, I just don't really think so. Maybe they could read it, 
but I don't know, it hit me really, really hard. There were multiple times when I was reading this book that I was gonna start crying and I wasn't even that far through it. Like it wasn't even just a thing at the climax of the book. I was on page like 90 or something and I was gonna start crying and I thought that it was fantastically done. And so because I was so emotionally invested and loved this book so much, like it's reflected in my high rating, but I was just really shocked, like my overarching feeling <laughs> was that I was so shocked that this was nominated in YA. But aside from like all of that, I don't want to belabor the point so much. Um, I really loved this. So I was so, so happy that it like lived up to that because I was really hoping um, based on the concept that it was going to be great. And I truly can't wait to read the second book in this duology. Next up, we've got two books that were both five stars, so they can really be talked about in whatever order. But the first is Fool's Quest by Robin Hobb, which is the second book in this final Fits in the Fool trilogy. This was like kind of tough to read, honestly. There's a lot of deep, really... Um, emotional parts in here that just like grab at you and like rip your heart open and like oh, you can feel so much of what the characters are feeling and there is just so much in here to set up and like really allow you to feel like why the characters motivations are what they are and there's also so much cool world building and magic in this final series where a lot of things are starting to come together because of the storyline that we're following we're discovering a lot of things and we're also just like the relationship building that we get is phenomenal and yeah i'm being vague on purpose but there's so much that's just great about this, and it actually does end on a little bit of a cliffhanger. So luckily, I didn't mind that so much because I knew I was going to read Assassin's Fate in a couple of weeks. But if I was reading Fool's Quest when it came out, I would have been like, Miss Hobb, how dare you? <laughs> So luckily, yeah, I am reading Assassin's Fate now, but Fool's Quest was just incredible. Like both of the books in this trilogy so far have just been like perfection. Then finally, we have Red Seas Under Red Skies by Scott Lynch, the second book in the Gentleman Bastard sequence. So I am actually going to be involved in another conversation, just like the one that we did about the lies of Locke Lamora on Murphy Napier's books channel with Ben and Bryce. Um, because I'm filming this on December 1st, that's actually going to be filmed today in just a little bit. So I'm really excited to gush about this because of course, it was five stars. Um, it was incredible. And so I just like I love for me, the star of the show in this book is um, Locke and Jean's friendship and just like the setting, because it's kind of more of the same in terms of like their hijinks. But the thing that really changes here a little bit is the dynamic between them and like what they're working through and stuff. Like I thought it was so interesting because like things aren't always perfect, but you can see the depth of their relationship in, in how they work through it. And then there are other relationships and friendships that develop in this book and other characters that I really love that I don't want to like spoil their existence. But there's also just like, the setting like this seafaring setting just becomes so it's in parts like tense and stressful and fun and just like vivid and like vibrant i don't know there's something about the way that he writes the kind of like pirate life and the nautical life that is really fun to me because there are a bunch of terms that are clearly made up and are absolute nonsense but as long as they make sense in world like i'm on board with them and i just love the way that like the, the people interact and like a ship is run and stuff so yeah, I was a big fan of this the first time I read it, and I'm happy to say that I was just as big of a fan of it this time around. Okay, so now that we have talked about the books that I read in November, um, we are ready to get into my December TBR. So I'll just very quickly mention, of course, the books that I'm still reading. So I want to finish Daughter of the Beast by E.C. Greaves. Then I am, of course, going to finish Emily Wilde's Encyclopedia of Fairies by Heather Fawcett. This I anticipate being a fairly fast read because that first 30% was very easy to get through and I'm very endeared to this already. And then we have finally for the books that I'm already started, 
Assassin's Fate by Robin Hobb. I cannot believe that I'm going to be finishing Realm of the Elderlings and this book is going to hurt me like I know it will. So I just, I guess I just have to hope that I'm not reading the end of it while I'm at work <laughs> or else people might see some, some things or I'll just go to the bathroom and cry in there. Then we have the final pick for reading booktubers favorite books of the entire year and that is Augustus by John Williams. So if you've been around my channel for a couple of months, I read Stoner by John Williams in October as the booktubers favorite books pick and that was a recommendation from Joanna and it was co-signed by Alan from the Library of Alexandria. And so this, Augustus, is Alan's actual recommendation but when the they had both recommended me John Williams. Um, even Alan had said like, whatever book you pick first, just read Stoner first. Like consider these as interchangeable. If you pick out Augustus, just read Stoner. So I loved Stoner, which definitely gives me hope and gets me excited that I will also love Augustus. And so I'm excited. This is such an on-brand recommendation for Alan, but seeing as I have already loved a John Williams book, um, it does make me happy to be reading this so um, I will definitely like talk to Alan let him know that I'm gonna be starting this and send him my thoughts probably and I will be vlogging like usual about my thoughts on this book and there will be a video on that then before we get into a bunch of books that are all kind of part of the same project um, Here's a book that I decided in the last couple of days that I would really, really love to reread in December. Um, and this is just like one of my favorite series and it is Pure Winter Vibes. So that is The Bear and the Nightingale by Catherine Arden. This is the first book in the Winter Night trilogy and I just like, I don't know, I miss this series. I think it was... Um, two years ago that I read this because I believe that I started it in um, December of 2021 and then I finished it into the spring of 2022 and it doesn't feel like that long ago which is why like I'm thinking back and I'm like well I didn't read it this spring so that means it has to be two years ago but that just feels wild so I think it's time for a reread of this because this is such an atmospheric book that I can just like sink into. I loved it so much on the first read and I think I deserve this happiness of rereading this in December. I lied, there's actually one more book before we move into the Goodreads books. So um, that is It Happened One Christmas by Chantal Gertin. And uh, this is basically about um, well, I don't want to get it wrong. So our main character, Zoe, she moves to does she move there or does she just come to this small town in Quebec. Um, she is like a filmmaker and she's finally getting the chance to make her own script into a film and she runs into the mayor of this small town, uh, Benoit Deschamps, and he like won't give her permission to film in his town so um, she's got to change his mind and you know there's like they get stranded together in an ice storm and this is just gonna be my Hallmark movie book for this Christmas season. Usually I will read one of these, one book like this. So this is my one for December 2023. Okay, we are finally ready to get into my um, remaining books for the Goodreads Choice Awards that I wanted to read. So just in case you didn't see the video where I went through this, um, I can have it linked in the description below, but basically what I realized is that I had owned and was interested in a lot of the books that were nominated in the Goodreads Choice Awards, but I hadn't actually read any of them yet. So now I have read Divine Rivals and I'm partway through Emily Wilde's Encyclopedia of Fairies, so we have rectified that slightly, but my goal was just to create a TBR of the books that I was the most excited about and see how many of those I could get to before the end of the year. And this was not a goal to read them before the Goodreads Choice Awards closed so that I could 
vote or anything like that. It was really just like a personal thing for me to get to some of these newer releases that I bought this year and that I've been interested in. So I'll just go through these fairly quickly. We have Wildfire by Hannah Grace, which is the same author as Icebreaker. And this book takes place at like a summer camp. Our two main characters are both camp counselors. And I think that like fraternizing between counselors is forbidden, but they're gonna do it anyway. <laughs> Then we have Happy Place by Emily Henry, which has been extremely popular this year. But if you are not familiar with the synopsis of this one, it is about a couple who have broken up, but they go on their yearly trip with their friends anyway. And they essentially pretend to still be a couple because they aren't ready to tell their friends yet. And I think they may even have one of their like one set of their friends that have gotten engaged and they don't want to ruin that moment for them. So they're just going to go on this trip together and pretend to still be together one last time. Then in the fantasy sphere, we have, um, of course, Encyclopedia of Fairies, which I'm currently reading, but then we also have Bookshops and Bone Dust by Travis Baldry, which is the prequel to Legends and Lattes, which I read, I think, last year in the summer, and I very much enjoyed it. So I've heard some people say that, like, this doesn't capture quite the same heart as Legends and Lattes, but that it's still kind of, like, a adorable and cozy so I'm hoping that it can just capture those like fireside vibes and be adorable and that I will really enjoy it for that reason. Then we have the horror kind of genre category. So we have Silver Nitrate by Silvia Moreno Garcia, which is about this um, director who wants to finish making an old movie that never got finished, but there's something like magical about it. And this movie is supposed to be like cursed, but if they can finish filming it, they can lift the curse. And uh, yeah, it just sounds really cool. And then finally, we have Vampires of El Norte by Isabel Cañas, which is the same author as The Hacienda, which I read in October and loved. So that made me really want to get to her new release, uh, Vampires of El Norte. So this is just one that I'm really excited about because I've heard that it has some of those same like horror elements in terms of how she approaches the supernatural and how she approaches the actual horror along with some of the romantic elements that I really loved in the Hacienda. So I'm just hoping for that perfect storm again where I love this book too. So um, when I'm feeling in the Christmas mood, there may be other books that I pick up, but this is definitely plenty for now. This is a lot of books and I'm hoping that I can get to all of them, but some of them are definitely quicker reads than others. Um, we only have like a few chunky fantasies in here, so I think it might be achievable depending on how busy we get with the holiday season and everything, but suffice to say, I am really, really excited to read all of these and um, yeah, I hope that it was fun to hear me talk about them. So let me know what your thoughts are on whether it's like what I read in November or what I'm planning to read in December or what you read in November or what you plan to read in December. I would love to chat about it. And with that said, that is going to be it for this video. So please like this video if you liked it. Subscribe if you'd like to see more from me. And as always, I'll have my Discord with Ben and socials linked in the description if you're interested in any of that stuff. And I hope you have a fantastic rest of your day. Bye.